Hi everybody, Mr. Neff here. I want to go over a couple second law example problems with you. And uh, you'll see the way I, I, I want to do this. I want to sort of get you started on them, give you some hints on them, and let you pause the video and then finish them, finish them yourself. And I think you'll get a lot out of that. Here's an example that has two forces that are uh, acting on an object that has a mass of 27 kilogram. One has a force, is a force of 12 newtons to the south, and one is 17 newtons to the west. Do a good job drawing that to scale. I think that looks okay for 12 newtons and 17 newtons. Now, they want the acceleration of the object. Well, of course, if I want the acceleration of the object, that's going to be the net force of the object divided by the mass. Acceleration and net force are vectors, so I'm going to need a direction on them. So what I want to do is I want to take that 12 and move it over there, head to tail. Now I can see that this one right here is the net force. And so if you would do... 12 square and 17 square, you're going to get, uh, and take the square root, of course, you're going to get 20.8 and maybe 20.81 newtons. And now this angle right here is going to be an inverse tan of 12 by 17, which is going to be 35 degrees south and west. So now all that I have to do to finish this one off is take that net force 20.81 newtons at 35 degrees south and west and divide it by the mass of 27 kilograms. Okay, that should be a super easy one to finish off. This example has a boat with a given mass and some forces on the boat and they want you to come up with the magnitude and direction of the acceleration. This should be a simple enough one, since especially because uh, things are just east and west to do without me. So why don't you pause the video now and then turn me back on and you see how I did it and um, get, you see that you probably did it correctly. So I hope you took the boat and said that the engines are generating a drive force 4100 newtons to the west. So let's say that uh, that's FD, force of, force of drive. And then there's a wind exerting 800 Newton force to the east. And so let's try to do a good job drawing that to scale. And then the, the water exerts a resistive force of 1200 east, FR for resistive force. And so now you can see that I have a, it, maybe you'll call the west negative, and so negative 4,100 newtons, and how about 800 and, and uh, 1,200 newtons is 2,000, and so how about a negative 2,100 newtons for uh, net force. Now, if I take the net force and I divide it by the mass, I can get negative 2,100 newtons by a uh, 6,800 kilograms, and I'm getting 0 0.3088 on that. And significant figure-wise, these were both significant to just that hundreds place, and so this is really gonna be 0 0.31 meters a second squared. Strictly speaking, that comes out negative, but I'm not going to make my answer as negative. I'm going to call it west because the problem did not specify positive or negative. Hey, take a look at number three. It says two horizontal forces, F1 and F2, are on the box. you got to figure out what F2 looks like so they didn't draw it. That it, it can point either left or right. Now, the box moves in the X direction only, and there's no friction or anything. So now suppose that F1 is 9 newtons to the right, and the mass of the box is 3 kilograms. Find the magnitude and direction of F2 when the acceleration of the box is positive 5, negative 5, and 0. Now, when the acceleration is positive 5, you know there must be a net force to the right. When it's negative 5, you know there must be a net force to the left. And when there's 0, you must, there must be no net force. So why don't you pause this video, give A, B, and C a try, and then turn this back on. Okay, so for part A, I, since I know that the acceleration is positive 5, then that says that I know that the net force is positive 15. How did I know that? 
Well, the net force is just equal to the MA, magnitude and direction. And so I know that three kilograms times, in this case, positive five meters a second squared. So that's gonna say that I have a positive 15 newtons. So now what do I have to add on to nine newtons to get 15 newtons? Well, that's pretty simple. So that means that F2 must be six newtons to the right, okay? Now in part B, that I need, I've got the same size net force, but it points the other direction. So it's a negative 15 newtons, because I had a negative uh, five meter per second square acceleration. So what force do I need to have negative 15 newtons? Well, I gotta have a real big one over here. I gotta have something that's big enough to cancel out the nine, plus still have 15 left over. So that says, that that F2 has to be 24 newtons, and that time that's to the left or negative. Now, if, and we'll call that F2 for part B, and if I want zero meters per second, so that means that I have to have no net force, and so for C, I know the net force is zero, so then I know that I must have a nine newton force that way, and a nine newton force that way. And so F2 is gonna be nine to the left. Hi everyone, on number five, we have a person in a kayak paddling and they give you information about an initial velocity, a final velocity, and a displacement. And they want you to, they wanna know what the magnitude of the net force is on this. I won't solve this one all the way out because I think you'll be able to get this one in a snap. But in the, the last step is certainly going to be the net force is the mass times the acceleration. So if I just take that 73 kilograms and multiply it by whatever the acceleration is, then I should be in good shape. Well, what is the acceleration? Well, of course, the, I'm going to think, well, kinematics wise, the acceleration could be found with uh, final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times displacement. So you'll be able to do some substitution there, find what that acceleration is, plug it in right there. And I don't think you'll have trouble getting 32 newtons as that net force. Here's an example that shows two forces acting on a three kilogram object. They say, find the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of the object. Now on something like this, if it were on earth, you'd automatically figure, well, there's gotta be a force of gravity on this too. But they did say only two forces are acting on the object. So I'm assuming, that that's not the case. So I'm gonna get rid of that force of gravity and just go what they said with the two forces. Okay, so now I need a net force here, right? And I have, uh, I have to add two vectors together, one of which being two dimensional. So, so conceptually, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking to get this net force right here. Red one's a net force. I'll divide that by the mass and I'll have the acceleration issue with the with this is of course that that's two-dimensional and so it's easier to go with components so now look I will take that darker blue one the one that I translated and I'll say I've got this component which of course is going to be 60 newtons times the cosine of 45 degrees and then I have the y component which since it's 45 we know they're the same but sine of 45 degrees technically. So now I have a, a, a total X of the, of the net force of 40 plus whatever this component is, and then a Y of the net force of the, of the blue Y component. I can find that net force, magnitude and direction, and then I can just simply divide that by the mass and get the acceleration. One last piece the acceleration will have the same direction on it as the net force. Give it a try for yourself. Hey, on number 13, we have a rocket with a given mass in flight. The th and so we'll, we'll draw a free body diagram for that thing right here. And we'll say, the thrust is directed at an angle of 55 degrees above the horizontal and has a magnitude of that. So the, we'll say the thrust is gonna look something like this, FT, Force of thrust, and not to be, let's make it F, T, H for thrust. Uh, and there's the size of it. 
the magnitude and direction of the like find the magnitude and direction of the acceleration. Okay. Now the other thing that I think would be on here is the force of gravity. And so I didn't put that on the last example, but I am going to put it on this example. And I don't don't judge how far that is because I'm not quite sure if that's if that's drawn the right size. It, it actually probably is pretty good. It's a little bit smaller. Imagine like multiplying this mass by by approximately 10 it would give me about 4.5 10 to the sixth. You know, 9.8 would be a little bit smaller. But uh, that then, of course, comparing with 7.5 times 10 to the 6th, it'll be a little bit smaller, like about what I have. Okay, so uh, if we're going to find the acceleration, we have to find the net force. And so I have a force of thrust in the x direction, which would be the force of thrust times the cosine of the angle here, which they gave me as 55 degrees. And then I have this force of thrust in the y direction, and that would be the force of thrust times the sine of 55 degrees. Okay, so once I have that, I can I can subtract the force of gravity and the force of thrust in the y direction, get a y resultant. I'll have the x resultant, and then I'll be able to get a net force. So we'll say that the net force, magnitude, and direction will be the force of thrust in the x direction plus the total of the force of thrust in the y direction and the force of gravity. Remember, those are in opposite directions, so the force of gravity is going to be negative. You'll put those together head to tail, and once you have that force of thrust, then you'll be able to divide it by the mass, and guess what? You'll have the acceleration. Give it a try for yourself.